A decade ago, anime wasn't exactly as popular as it is today, and you would have got bullied if you told someone you like anime. Anime has changed not just in popularity, the audience, the studios, the themes, stories, and the entire culture around anime is completely different. A couple of days ago, I randomly scrolled across an anime called Zankyo no Terror, or Terror in Resonance. I didn't think much of it, but I clicked on it and I checked a couple of details and I found out that it's an anime made by Studio MAPPA. Today when you say Studio MAPPA, it's a different beast when compared to 2014. MAPPA is a steal of quality for the shows they animate and it's well deserved. We do hear about terrible working conditions and other problems animators and artists face, but generally MAPPA is still regarded as a very high quality studio producing high quality anime for top of the shelf IPs. Most of the people today found out about MAPPA when news came out about Attack on Titan Season 4 being taken over by the studio. People were a bit skeptical when this happened, but most people were fine with it. And that's because Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 was also airing around the same time. And the animation quality on that was kinda insane. So people had to put their trust on MAPPA from there on onwards. But after noticing Zankyo no Terror, I want to check it out and see what MAPPA did 10 years ago on one of their earliest anime projects and their first anime original project. I didn't know anything about Zankyo no Terror when I started watching it, apart from the drama and mystery tag analyst had. One of the reasons I even started watching it was because it was only 11 episodes in length and it felt like something quick and easy to get through, so I went ahead. I have heard the name from someone or on some forum randomly mentioned because the name Zankyo no Terror wasn't completely alien to me. It was there somewhere in the back of my head waiting to be unlocked, but I don't think anyone has ever recommended me to watch the show, and chances are I stumbled upon a random Twitter thread that was talking about it. Looking at this anime today, it seems like quite a risky move, because it's made by a new studio and it's also an anime original show with no ties to any manga or novel, so they had no clout to begin with and no fans to rely on. Zankyo no Terror feels like an anime that everyone watched and talked about back when it was airing, and then people gradually stopped talking about it due to the newer shows taking the spotlight. Not every anime can be in spotlight even if it's good for almost a decade, and Zankyo no Terror feels like one of those animes. So getting into the anime, the very first thing I noticed is how muted the colors are. I'm personally someone who loves muted color tones in anime. There's a certain vibe to it which is similar to a rainy day that makes me feel extremely comfy and this show gives me that vibes. But that does not mean this is a comfy show by any means though. Zankyo no Terror is a short mystery drama with pretty large scope that sometimes I do feel the 11 episode runtime might have been a bit lower than I would have liked. I'm a big sucker for mystery and drama, my favorite show is Hyoka, and while I wouldn't consider the mystery aspect to be the reason it's my favorite, it's still a big reason. So this anime was right up my alley, and, and if you like animes like Death Note or Code Geass, you will enjoy this one too. But don't expect this to be on that level of deep storytelling or plot twist stuff. The plot of Zankyo no Terror primarily revolves around two teenage terrorists named 9 and 12. 9 and 12 are introduced very mysteriously and their motivations aren't really shown in the beginning. The show starts off with them stealing plutonium from a nuclear reactor facility, but this incident will only be important very late into the story, as you would have imagined. The duo, calling themselves Sphinx, threatens to destroy Tokyo unless the police are able to solve a series of riddles that they will post onto the internet. The first video wasn't really taken seriously because it was just a random video on YouTube just like this one is, so make sure to subscribe, until they used thermites and toppled over an entire building, causing huge amounts of property damage but Interestingly, zero casualties. This is a pattern that you will notice in every one of their terrorist attacks. 
These riddles also reference Greek mythology, particularly the story of Oedipus, adding an intellectual layer to the plot which makes the ending a bit more interesting. The reason they don't cause casualties is because their goal isn't really to hurt the people but to send a message to the world, a secret that was hidden by the government. All Sphinx want is the world to know about them, so they can tell a message they've been wanting to tell for years, and this was their way of letting people know about them. 9 and 12 are survivors of a secret experiment aimed at creating super soldier children. The Rising Peace Academy was doing inhumane experiments on orphaned kids with Savant Syndrome. Savant Syndrome is an interesting phenomenon where people demonstrate exceptional aptitude in one domain, such as art or mathematics, despite significant social or intellectual impairment. Those with these conditions generally have a neurodevelopmental condition such as autism or have experienced a brain injury. These experiments were conducted under harsh and inhumane conditions, pushing the children to their limits with crazy drugs, with the end goal to make these children into human weapons. These children were not given names because that would be considered a bit too humane. 9 and 12 aren't the only ones who survived this horrible experiment. Another girl named 5 also did. 9 and 12 actually escaped the lab, but 5 was the final survivor of all these experiments, and every other kid who was in there died because of these experiments. Phi was then taken in by the FBI because she was the human weapon they were developing all along. The setup and backstory is all pretty massive, and it's a pretty great hook for most people I'd say, because this is a very interesting premise and I doubt many would click off such a story. Coming to the modern day where the anime takes place, 9 and 12 goes undercover to get to their goal of exposing what the government did to them all along. They join high schools under random names and start working towards their goal of terrorizing Tokyo to get their revenge. These police are powerless in front of Sphinx without any idea on who they are and what their motives are. Sphinx operate very meticulously and they don't leave any loose ends. And if they do, it's all planned. So the entire anime is them playing cat and mouse for most part. 9 and 12 are very interesting characters and like I said before, they both have Savant Syndrome and were locked in for experimentation. They're extremely intelligent in multiple ways and can work on the field and behind the screen, no problem. They can hack into stuff, make bombs, and also shoot. 9 and 12, despite their contrasting personalities, share a deep bond forced through their traumatic past. 9 is stoic, highly intelligent, and strategic, often displaying a cold demeanor. 12 on the other hand is cheerful, extroverted, and equally brilliant. 9 and 12 work together to form a perfect team until Lisa Mishima comes along. Lisa is just a high schooler who went to the same school as 9 and 12. She has some issues with her mom and got trapped in the first terrorist attack that happened in Tokyo. 12 gave her a choice of joining them or dying, so obviously she chose the prior after thinking about it. Lisa might come off as a very pointless character, a very hateable character a lot of people too, but she is still very integral to the plot. Lisa becomes a hassle to the beautiful plans of of 9 and 12, but her involvement is also the reason everything that happened in the anime happened. If you're thinking this from a logical point of view, of course it does not make a lot of sense, but everything in life does not happen perfectly and imperfections are just as important in creating a compelling narrative. Lisa, unlike 9 and 12, does not have any kind of motivation other than to stay alive. So all she has to do was shut up and don't get in their way and that's what she does mostly until she leaves home, even though 9 wasn't really happy about it. And the last character that I want to talk about is probably my favorite character out of them all, and he's a detective. Shibazaki Kenjiro is a really good character that I would have loved to see more of. Shibazaki is the only detective who understood what was even remotely going on when the terrorist attacks started to happen. He was the one solving riddles and connecting the dots and trying to find out the motives behind these terrorists. Shibazaki was sent to the mailroom due to some disputes with one of his past cases, but was called back because of his skills. He wasn't really interested in the case at first, but after hearing about the stealing of plutonium from the nuclear power plant, he understood the severity and what they could do with it. 
so this case became very personal for him. Shibazaki, being from Hiroshima, is also a second generation atom bomb survivor, and he did not want another one of those tragedies to happen again. And he was locked in on finding who the Sphinx was, and he was the only one successful in finding the reason and trying to understand why they did it. He also wanted to find out what the Rising Peace Academy was and get the truth to the public. And while there's another character that I should have talked about, which is Five, I really don't want to mention her here because I think that would be really a bit too close to spoiler territory. While some viewers might have mixed feelings about the ending, I found it bold and fitting for the narrative. It stays true to the story's theme and characters offering a resolution that's both satisfying and thought-provoking. Zankyo no Terror is a hidden gem that deserves more attention. The anime's tight and concise storytelling combined with its compelling characters, and I forgot to mention a great soundtrack, make it a standout in MAPPA's early catalog. If you're looking for a short, impactful anime, give this one a try. In conclusion, Zanki no Terror is an anime that you wouldn't really expect from MAPPA today because they mostly take up action-heavy shows, so making an anime original drama is not something they would probably do today. But we do have Zanki no Terror as an example of what it would look like and it slaps. Thanks for watching, like this video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you like my content, and I'll see you later.